want to be your mistress. Lindsay Wagner, Barry Bostwick, and Ephraim Zimblis Jr. Sunday, the suck up begins. Judith Krentz's Scruples. Give your home the light, classy look of quality wicker and rattan furniture, now with incredible savings. It's Dar's huge summer-long wicker sale under the red and white tent. Dar's on North Clinton, across from Target, behind Glenbrook. The big one is here at Value City Furniture. Our stores are jammed to capacity, so we put up the tents and moved our entire inventory into our parking lots at record-breaking sale prices. Special purchases, discontinued merchandise, factory buyouts, three-piece living room starting $498, four-piece bedroom $298, middle bed in choice of colors $59, three-piece dine at $49, save 50 60, even 70 percent off. It all must be sold. Bring your truck, your trailer, come prepared to buy. The 10th annual parking lot sale now at Value City Furniture. How long till our landfills are overflowing? Just a few months up to uh, two to three years. We have a year and a half to three years left with the current permit. How much could we end up paying to solve this problem? The fee would be would be uniform. Uh, everyone would, would pay. Our long-term goal is to wean off the property tax system of, of financing. Hello, I'm Victor Locke. The problem won't go away. How can we solve it? Find out some of the answers on Impact, Sunday at 1 on 21 Alive. How Hollywood is encountering alien abductions on Entertainment Night. This is Drew Brown III, and we've got a lot of your fans who are already here, people who are familiar with your work. He makes a living uh, flying for Federal Express. He's a Navy guy, grew up in Harlem, and now gives speeches to young people who wonder what they... Oh, I won't, I won't be. <laughs> About the future and where we're going and uh, good old America and all the rest. And uh, show them the picture of the... Show them the uh, picture in the airplane. There you are. Are you bad? Uh, his nickname is Dark Gable, okay? Uh, um, he's the founder of the American Dream Program, combats, uh, which combats uh, drug, uh, and speaks, uh, drug abuse and speaks to educational issues, etc. It's a little unfair to uh, Drew Brown III to ask him to weave his magic in the limited time we have available to us, but he has consented to give some of these young people from City Kids uh, a suggestion of what he does when he packs them in. It's high school gymnasiums around the country. And then later in our program, I want you to meet the former Pittsburgh Steeler, Mel Blount, and lots of other people who are really getting something done in a world that otherwise looks kind of bleak and dreary. Uh, believe it or not, we are making progress, and here is just one of the folks who's helping us do that. I give you Drew Brown the third as he speaks. <laughs> You know, you got punks walking around these streets. You got punk gangs walking around here called Bloods, called Crips. You got punks walking around the streets of America called the Ku Klux Klan, and they walk around our streets saying that they're bad. Mike Tyson, who used to be heavyweight champion of the world, says that he's bad. My boy Michael Jackson has the audacity to say that he's bad. Well, guess what? They're not bad. I'm bad. And I'm bad because I can fly 550 miles an hour, 50 feet from the ground, and carry 28 500-pound bombs under my wings. I have the expertise, the technology, and the know-how, not to just come take out this studio, but to take out the entire neighborhood. And baby, that's bad. <laughs> and you see, you see, if them punk gangs ever come bothering me, if them sissies ever come bothering me with their 357s, their 44s, their shotguns, or their Uzis, them punk gangs ever come bothering me, I'm in a gang too. See, I'm in a gang called the United States Navy, and if they bother me enough, I could just go get my boys. <laughs> and we have enough firepower to come take out the city of New York. But that's not what makes me bad. Do you want to know what makes me bad? What makes me bad is I have a college education. That's what makes me bad. So if you think them punk drug dealers are bad, if you really think them sissies are bad, check it out. You can't touch this. Playtime is over. Playtime is over. If you, I'm gonna be your worst nightmare. I'm gonna be your conscience. Cause see, either you gonna listen to me now or you gonna listen to me later. But I promise you one thing in life, every single one of you sitting out there is gonna listen to me. If you don't plan on going to college, listen closely. If you do not plan on going to college and getting a four year degree, if you do not plan on going to somebody's university and getting a four year college degree, you kids of the 90s, you need to get up and get out of high school today because McDonald's needs you. I'm sorry I got to tell it to you like this. These are the 1990s. If you don't plan on getting an education, you're going to be a bum. Accept it now. 
How do you think they kept black people down 200 years ago? How do you think they kept us down? You think it was with whips? You think it was with chains? You think it was with picking cotton? No. They kept an entire nation of people slaves just because they wouldn't let us read. But on the other hand, how come every time you watch Dallas Dynasty or Falcon Crest, or you go to the governor's house, or you go to the president of a large corporation's house, how come every time you go to their house and ring the doorbell, ding dong, somebody always comes to the door and says, they'll meet you in the library. How come everybody in this country who has something has a library, and yet they kept the whole nation of people slaves just because they wouldn't let us read? You better wake up and get to this. If you don't learn how to read and further your education, you're going to be a slave in this country. Accept it now. But on the other hand, if you learn how to read and further your education, you can be anything you want. And you know what an excuse is? Because I hear it. I'd love to go to college, but I can't afford it. I would just love to go to college, but I can't afford it. Why don't you dare lie to me and don't you dare lie to yourself? If you can't afford to go to college, you better start busting your butt now in high school. And you get a 3.8, 3.9, or 4.0 grade point average. And the teachers in this country will make sure you go to any college in this country for free. That's called a scholarship. If you can't get a scholarship, then you go work at McDonald's and you send your own little butt to college. Or you join the Army, Air Force, Navy, Coast Guard, and Marines. They'll send you to college. Or you get a loan, or you get a grant. I don't care what you do. I'm your worst nightmare. You take your butt to college because either you're gonna have to listen to me now or you're gonna have to listen to me later but I promise you one thing in life one day you're gonna have to listen since I'm talking to you I'm I mean this more than anything I am sorry kids I am gonna apologize now for something that only adults could have taught you if there was a big hot smoking flame and fire in this in this studio right now a big hot smoking flame and fire and you're scared and you start getting nervous now you think you're gonna die and all of a sudden a guy comes down here cool dude white dude and the white guy says, hey, what's happening, everybody? Come follow me. The exit's right over. Exit's right over. Uh, exit's over here. White guy. Then a little black guy comes down here, short, short hair, thick glasses, about 15 pencils in his pocket. A nerd, a little black Steve Urkel-looking nerd. <laughs> and the little black nerd goes like this. The oxygen level in this room is 0.74. 75 meters to my right is an exit. If you follow me within the next 16 seconds, your survivability rate goes up by 98%. Who do you think everyone sitting in this studio is going to follow? Because there is no black and white. There's only ignorance and intelligence. And I'm tired of America lying to these children. There is no black and white. You see, if black and white was so important, blind people would be prejudiced. If black and white was so important, handicapped children would be prejudiced. If black and white was so darn important, have you ever seen mentally retarded children? Well, guess what? Black and white has never crossed their mind once. So who in this country is really blind? Who in this country is really handicapped? And who in this country is really mentally retarded? There is no black and white. That's a lie. And if you want to get deep about it, we can do that. You see, there's never been a book written with God's name in it, whether it was the Torah, the Old Testament, the New Testament, the Quran, the Hindu book, or the Buddhist book. Never has a book been written with God's name in it that ever said anything about black and white, because it's a lie. If you don't make it in this country, it has nothing to do with the color of your skin. It has something to do with your intelligence. <laughs> last thing. Last thing, because when we told them, last thing I'm going to tell you, because when we told them this garbage, we didn't even tell you what prejudice was about. Because most of you in here think that prejudice has to do with the color of your skin. Well, Hitler only killed white people, and Hitler was white. Idi Amin only killed black people, and Idi Amin was black. Saddam Hussein right now is only killing Arabs, and Saddam Hussein is Arab. Prejudice has nothing to do with the color of your skin. Prejudice is a simple human trait, and prejudice simply means that you don't like yourself. So you have the need to put somebody else down because of the way they look or the way they act or the way they feel in order to make yourself look better. So if anybody's got that garbage in the body, the truth is, when you look in the mirror, you don't like what you see. You see, I'm not African-American. Stop changing my name. Since I've been born, I've been colored. I've been black. I've been Negro. I've been Afro-American. My name is Drew Brown, and I'm an American. This is my country. <laughs> and if you want to know who my roots are, and if you want to know who my roots are, there were 178,000 black slaves who fought in the Civil War for me to be free. If you want to know who my roots are, it's Mr. John F. Kennedy, Martin Luther King, and Medgar Evers who got killed for the right for me to be free. If you really want to know who my roots are, it's Miss Rosa Parks who didn't get off of her bus for me to be free. This is my land. This is my country. America doesn't mean white. America means free. The land of the free and the home of the brave. Well, I'm free. And let me tell you, I'm brave.
chat with Mr. Brown in just a moment. <laughs> weight loss centers ask you how much weight do you want to lose well i know i'd feel better if i were 15 pounds thinner you can lose that for 49 dollars to get back in my favorite clothes i need to drop 25 pounds it's still 49 dollars 40 pounds it's okay whatever amount you need to lose you can lose it for 49 dollars on physicians weight loss centers exclusive system one program call us now at 432-5615 or visit our office in the park west shopping center Gordon, right? Yes. Have you ever worked with anything high-tech? No. No. Thank you for the resume. But we're looking for someone with... More education. Some experience. Good luck to you. Call ITT Technical Institute for a copy of 10 Things You Should Know About Today's Job Market. 1-800-942-0099. Call now. If you don't get to sleep, I won't get to sleep. Nitol safely helps you fall asleep fast so you can get your Z's. Nitol or maximum strength Nitol. Nitol will help you get your Z's. Why are these people smiling? They've got new Polyden for partials with the power to clean the pearly part and the metal part. And the best part, it only takes five minutes. So get new Polyden for partials unless you're already too good looking as it is. A striped toothpaste that bites tartar? Come on. That's the way. I like it. I need proof it works. That's the way. I like it. So I asked our dentist about Aquafresh. Those Aquafresh stripes really fight. Aquafresh with powerful fluoride fights cavities, fights black, and fights ugly tartar. All concentrated in the only toothpaste striped to fight. It works. They like it. I'll buy it. Aquafresh. The one they like is striped to fight. I like it. Uh, how's this fly, Drew Brown III? This is a very captivating uh, monologue of yours that you've delivered, I don't know, thousands and thousands of young people. Uh, millions. Millions. Three so. million in the past three years. Yeah. And uh, they're full of questions afterward, and they're turned down to the importance of education. Uh, you well, know. the truth is simple. It's an awful cynical house you're working here. Oh, no, I'm... the truth is simple. Let me ask you something. What does, what does um, Thurgood Marshall, Phil Donahue, Bill Cosby, George Bush, every senator, every congressman, what do you all have in common? No. <laughs> Money? You all, you all have an education. What the 90% of the people on welfare, 90% of the people are homeless, and almost 95% of the people in the penitentiary have in common. They all don't have an education. This is simple. You don't get an education, you're not going to make it in this country. And that's the whole point of your... Uh speech that you made, uh, you've been in a whole bunch of uh, gymnasiums around this uh, country. You sit next to uh, Mel Blount, the former Pittsburgh Steeler, who was incidentally inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1989. Well, for a quarterback, you're famous. Uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, you founded the Mel Blount Youth Home in uh, Pennsylvania. You also have one in the South, do you not? You have in two. Vidalia, Georgia, right, which was founded in 1983. Uh-huh. Uh, and, and how are you different? Or what, uh, and who do you accommodate? And where'd you get this spirit, uh, Well, Mel? basically, I think, um, first of all, I think my whole project started out of love. I think uh, being the youngest of 11 kids, having a mother and father who really believed in the family unit, believed in church, believed in education, uh, and of course having the platform from the National Football League, uh, being a four-time Super Bowl winner and Hall of Famer. It was a good platform and a good vehicle to use to influence kids because I felt that I could do more than just sign autographs and take pictures with kids. While you briefly tell us what you do here, show them this film, uh, Brian. Here are some films taken uh 
at well, uh, basically what we do we believe in developing the total person both physically mentally and morally and what we do with our kids we try to get them and shape our kids get up in the mornings they run they are up at 5 30 and they're running we try to get three miles a day in they work on the farm uh, they grow their own food they ride and see about horses Cal, we have a certified Angus beef program that we've started. They're working with Cal. We teach these kids to be independent by making their own beds and taking care of themselves, learning how to wash their own clothes. So we try to give them the toll works. Mm -hmm. We don't want to leave anything out. Uh, with a whole um, platter of uh, things we have to speak to, uh, Mel, just a couple of things. How many do you accommodate in, in this kind of facility? Well, each facility uh, accommodates between 20 and 24 kids. Uh -huh. And you're funded? Well, we're just like any other nonprofit organization. We're out there begging, uh, begging for funds. Uh, <laughs> and, and it's tough because yeah. it's a competitive uh, business. And what we have to do is try to have the best program we could possibly have and get the best results right. out of our kids. You're the youngest of 11. Were you raised in, where were you raised? I was born and raised in Vidalia, Georgia on a farm and uh, my parents kept us busy. We never went to town. They would go to town on weekends and buy their groceries, and we would stay on the farm and work. Uh -huh. And your, uh, when your mother, mother said, pick up the, the, the bucket, you picked up the bucket. Right, because we had a lot of respect for our parents, and it's basically because of their strong leadership. And I think one of the problems right now with parents is the kids are basically caught up in a society where they are not getting that reinforcement at home. They're not getting a strong leadership. We got both parents working, kids come home, there's yeah. no one to supervise them, and they well, wind up in trouble. Well, um, Mr. Blount, sir, have you ever met Clifton L. Talbert? No, but I, I've talked with him. And you uh, know about his work. I know about this I, is it's something. a great book. Hang on one minute, Angel. We'll be with you in just a second. You're from New York City. You go last in, in this town. <laughs> His book is titled, Mr. Talbert's book is titled, Once Upon, a T uh, Once Upon a Time When We Were Colored. You know about it. Um, here you are celebrating uh, the culture really very close to uh, Mr. Blount's uh, upbringing. Yours was in Glen Allen, Mississippi. Glen Allen, Mississippi, that's correct. Uh, church? Family, the whole bit. And... Uh, Boy, you got, you got dressed up for church. Just about every Sunday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday. <laughs> <laughs> and um, one of the points you're making here is that uh, you want uh, young black Americans to know their heritage. And this, this was probably very much a part of their own lineage, huh? There's no question about it. The sense of community the sense of family working together, doing those things that will last for a lifetime, happened at a very difficult time during the era of segregation. Today, my children are growing up in a world where color is something that comes in a box of crayons, a world of Bill Cosby and Yves Saint Laurent. I have written once upon a time when we were colored because I want my children to know of the lifestyle that gave them their father and their mother. It's very difficult to master the present and make a meaningful contribution to the future unless you understand and appreciate the past. In our desire as black Americans to put segregation behind us, we have put ourselves in danger of forgetting our past, the good with the bad. I believe that to forget our colored past is to forget ourselves, who we are, and where we've come from. <laughs> Show them Papa. Show them Papa. This is really your grandfather, I think. My great-grandfather. Your great-grandfather. Yes. Who kind of raised you, did he? Oh, he was everything to me. He Listen was my to this. hero. When I think of Papa today, you write, I'm reminded of a colored Southern Buddha. He was robust, very imposing, and his head was as clean and shiny as that of an ancient Chinese god. Being a well-known and respected Baptist preacher, he was looked to for his wisdom and in many instances served as a go-between for the coloreds when problems arose involving whites. Boy, they wouldn't go near this book in the 60s. Because it's sort of like, um, you'd be accused of celebrating black people who were passive and semi-educated. Yes, sir. No, sir. Just the way the white men wanted black people. You've probably heard this. 
And to those who would suggest that this is not a place or something to celebrate for our kids, you would say what? I would say just the opposite. Those people were probably the bravest people that I've ever known. For example, my great-grandfather, when he would step off the sidewalk so that a white couple could pass. See, I don't get caught up in the fact that Papa stepped off the sidewalk, but I get caught up in the fact that Papa reached over and held my hand because he was an investor for the future. He knew that one day his great-grandson would be able to sit here, New York City, perhaps Europe or Africa. And he was not selfish. And that is what I celebrate, an unselfish, caring individual. Just briefly, um, uh, Clifton, let's just go through. Show them these pictures, uh, Brian. We, we got a lot to do today, and an audience wants in. So let's, uh, Glen Allen, Mississippi, near Greenville, I assume. Near Greenville. Uh-huh. Uh, this your mama? That's my mother when she was 19. And she had you when she was? She was 18. Next slide. And that's Cotton. And Cotton was beginning not to be king. No, he was just about slipping out of that role when I was living in Mississippi. Up. How old are you, Clifton? I'm 44. Uh, next slide. Who's, is this an aunt? That's Looks my, like an aunt to me. That's my great aunt that raised me. <laughs> Look at these children. Well, yeah, that's me being a big brother yeah. with my two older sisters. Were you sisters. spanked, Clifton? Yes, I was. You were spanked? Yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'd love to know why, but we'll ask you at another time. <laughs> Go ahead, uh, Brian. Uh, this is the late 50s. That's, that's a, Yeah, that's Glen Allen, uh, downtown Glen Allen, that has probably disappeared from the way it was as I remember yeah. it. Now, I want to read from your book for the next slide. I want to read your account. She is ready to go to the prom. Am, am I right? You're right. She looks like, uh, you know, all those teenagers, you know. Teenage girls look, you know, 17 going on 27. You ever notice that? And the boys are the opposite, you know. The boys look... <laughs> Listen to this. The boys do. You ever see a 17-year-old boy? I mean, his nose doesn't fit his face, and, you know, it looks like a chicken. Um, but the girls, I'm telling you... Here we go. From um, Clifton Talbert's uh, Once Upon a Time When We Were Colored. Glen Allen, Mississippi, 50s. Everybody in Glen Allen knew when it was prom night, and everybody would be watching, sitting on their front porches so they could see the young ladies and gentlemen walk by, perhaps hear the comments and compliments of the neighbors. I joined Ma Punk on the front porch, the Garrett, as she called it, and waited to see the start of the prom. It was easy for us to see because her house was just north of the colored school grounds. The school grounds were immaculate, and all the teachers would be present wearing the gowns and suits that had served them well at their colored college alma maters. There she is. There's, there's Bernice. I saw Bernice as the girls and their dates began to arrive. The girls arranged themselves on one side of the lawn with their gowns spread out as they gently knelt on the grass. The boys in their suits and awkward to these once-every-year social graces stood on the opposite side with the deep green grass as the backdrop. With their gowns spread out in full circles around them, the girls looked like a living bouquet of colored flowers waiting to be picked by the anxious boys. As a girl's name was called, a boy would walk over, hold out his hand, and she would stand a full height while he pinned a corsage on her dress. Together, they would walk into the school where the colored band would be playing the blues. As I would later learn, they spent the best part of the night dancing slow dragging as it was called at that time. For those few hours, the eighth grade prom transformed our colored community of sharecroppers and hired hands into a society of gentlemen and debutantes. <laughs> Doesn't get more civil than that. But you also had colored only drinking fountains down there. You had colored only toilet facility. And in many times, no colored toilet facilities. Colored only place on the train. That's right. Colored only place on the, uh, at the train station. You had white only. <laughs> <laughs> We were both equally deprived, were we? <laughs> and we'll be back in just a moment. At most carpet stores, this is how far your money goes. 
But at Carpetland USA, you get more for your money. Especially now during Carpetland's big one, our biggest sale of the year. Savings on over 5,000 carpets, completely installed with pad for a penny and... No payments for six months. Plus, save on every vinyl floor area rug and remnant during Carpetland's big one. Hurry, our biggest sale of the year ends Saturday. Carpetland USA. More for your money or your money back guarantee. Some people like them because they're big on health. Mm. Others, because they're big on their family's health. But everyone's big on that great burger taste. Tastes great. <laughs> Harvest Burgers from Midland Harvest. Get the great taste of good health. Now in your grocer's freezer case. Allen County Motors has just received a special shipment of 30 1992 Templars. Discount priced at $89.95 or $149 a month on the plan. These factory fresh Templars are fully equipped, not stripped. Take a look. Polycast wheels, dual remote mirrors, power locks, rear window defroster, air conditioning, automatic transmission, AM FM stereo cassette, tilt wheel, and much more. If you're buying, take a look at Allen County Motors 92 Templars. Remember, if you don't have our price, you'll pay too much. We guarantee it. You're running late for work again, but you know there's a traffic jam out there somewhere. But where? You refuse to get stuck in traffic with no way out, but which way should you go? Murphy's Law says you're doomed to spend the morning inhaling other people's fumes. Relax, we've got you covered. Let Captain Marty Bender guide you through the morning maze with the 21 Alive Traffic Report. Wake up to live, up-to-the-minute area traffic conditions. Mornings at 6.15 and 6.45, only on 21 Alive. The Mel Blount Youth Home is at um, Rural Delivery, number one, box 91, Claysville, Pennsylvania. The zip is 15323. Uh, any bells ringing for you, Mel, on this? I haven't really read the book, but I think that there's a lot of substance to it just from uh, talking with uh, Mr. Talbert and also uh, experiencing that myself because I was born in 1948 and, you know, even today, uh, we're still struggling with some things that uh, really should be behind us, but I think that in, in a sense that we've lost a lot because of uh, integration, uh, you know, especially in the school system when we talk about our education and, and having that role model in the school that can really work and understand our black kids. We don't have a black male in the educational system, such as your black coach, your black uh, uh -huh. uh, principal, and even uh, as far as the black women who can really identify with our kids. Uh, right. It's a transition for everybody, in particular uh, the kids. Did you go to high school in Georgia? I went to high school in I Georgia. I bet your coach was white. No, I went to an all-black high school. And That's a good thing, is it? Also, uh, went to Southern University, which was an all-black college, and I so think... So Great. No wonder he was special. <laughs> <laughs> Super. Um, your all-black high school just got a hand from these thoughtful young people whom we've asked to be with us in our audience and we'll give them a chance to speak. But before we do, please meet Angel Rodriguez. You are uh, executive director of the Andrew Glover Youth Program here in New York City. You work with at-risk inner-city youths. If I understand this effort, um, among other things, you, first of all, not every kid who gets in trouble ought to go to jail. I think that's, uh, is that number one on your uh, agenda? Right. Yes, that it certainly is a concern of ours. <laughs> well, I'm not as famous as these guys, but I, um, through, since 1978, have been running a street-based, community-based, um, alternative to incarceration uh, program. Alternative to incarceration. Correct. Uh -huh. uh, and that means that um, the youth workers of this program spend their days in the courthouse advocating with lawyers going before judges trying to bring forward the kind of information that I think the criminal justice system lacks and that is who these people are before them rather than docket numbers I mean if a youngster has been arrested three times in two months something's wrong it doesn't take a genius to identify yeah. however the system the prosecutor's office and we can sort of run it down um, are concerned about number of statistics and, and people basically walk the streets and when they come back a third time perhaps mm -hmm. then we're dealing with de definite incarceration. Mm -hmm. um, we appear before judges and bring in what we consider 
individualized and specific information about these kids and or young people through that process we allow the judges and, and prosecutors to consider perhaps an alternative to incarceration I see uh, it, it's pretty I think well known that we incarcerate people today by the by the bulk in systems that don't correct the co-correctional systems but they don't correct and not only that they make it worse often you don't, need to, you, need no, you don't need to build more prisons. You need to clean up the prisons we already have. You can get more drugs in these prisons than you can out in the streets. You see, Phil, we're going to pay for these kids. We're going to pay for these kids. We, either we pay $29,000 a year to put them in jail, or yeah. you pay $29,000 a year and send them to college. We're going to pay. Actually, if you want to balance the budget, you send them to school. Yeah. Actually, me... we're paying more than that. It's costing at least $50,000 to incarcerate. And one young one youngster in yeah. a state institution and it cost seventy five thousand dollars a year out of our tax and money we have a million people now yeah. we have a million people in jail either That's they correct. suck taxes or million. they give taxes yeah let me just review here i don't want it, I, I want this audience in here um drew brown the third steps forward to say among other things that it's not about black and white it's about whether you're educated comes forward now Bl mel blount who feels that if you know if i'm in the hall of fame and i got four super bowl rings maybe i have a responsibility to return some of this energy to society, which he's doing in two different locations, uh, rural places where young people who've seen the street and had some problems get shaped up. May we pray to the Lord uh, in, every, in every case. Uh, Angel Rodriguez steps forward to say, I'm from New York City. I see it out there. I'm a lot closer to it than you are in neighborhoods surrounded by graffiti. Too many kids are swept up in a very imperfect system that's already overloaded and is going to do nobody any good and certainly not going to enhance the safe safety of any American of any color. And Clifton Talbert uh, steps forward with his once upon a time when we were colored to tell us about the story of black life in the South before the great migrations to the North. How much do young people know about that world today? And we'll give you all a chance to ask these gentlemen your own question in just a moment. <laughs> Get Dad dressed up for Father's Day with a pair of new dress shoes from Timothy Shoes Northcrest. Now through Father's Day, you'll find men's dress shoes by famous makers such as Floorshine, Rockport, Nunbush, Dexter, Freeman, Allen Edmonds, and more. You'll find many in hard-to-find sizes, narrows and wides to size 15. Also find savings on summer shoes for women by Grasshoppers and women's walking sandals by Rockport and SAS. Hurry for best selection to the men's dress shoe sale now through Father's Day and save on many men's dress shoe styles at Timothy Shoes Northcrest. A message from Sweeney, Pfeiffer, and Blackburn. Injured in an automobile accident? Despite what you may have been told by an insurance company, it's important to consult with an attorney before you sign a release, make a statement, or negotiate a settlement. Call Sweeney, Pfeiffer, and Blackburn now for a free appointment. And remember, there is no fee unless we make a recovery for you. Sweeney, Pfeiffer, and Blackburn. Attorneys for injured people. One. Only one gum passes the test when you've got dental work, and that's Freedent. Freedent won't stick to your dental work, so you can be confident chewing it. And because it also moistens your mouth and freshens your breath, Freedent's in a class by itself. Freedent's the one that took the stick out of gum, and Freedent moistens your mouth. Yeah, moistens your mouth, and freshens your breath while you chew. Non-stick Freedent moistens your mouth and freshens your breath. Oh, uh, uh, um, um, uh, EPT, the most trusted name in home pregnancy test, works in just minutes. But a baby. EPT, the fast, easy way to get the big news. Cool. <laughs> Dixie wants to remind you, not all paper plates are as strong, soak-proof, and cut-resistant as ours. Dixie paper plates. Dish it out. We can take it. Diet Dr. Pepper tastes more like regular Dr. Pepper. When you want one, there's no stopping the taste. You make me feel.
feel so young. Promise Extra Light Spread. Half the saturated fat and calories of margarine and a taste you'll enjoy with all your heart. You make me feel so young. Now, Promise Extra Light in sticks. Get heart smart. Number one, box 91, Claysville, Pennsylvania. The zip is 15323. Those of you who would like information about what this uh, Pro Football Hall of Famer is doing, there is life after football, and doesn't he look good for an old pro, huh? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. Are you there, caller? I'm glad you waited. Hi. Yes, I am. Hi. I just want to make a comment. I think that what Drew is saying is, is fantastic, and I do agree with him. But I want all the kids in the audience and around to know that you don't have to go to college to become successful. You can become successful just by picking up a book and reading it. I didn't go to college, and I landed a pretty good job in the health and fitness industry. Well, first of all, I said kids of the 90s. Do you have children? No, I, I'm 23. Oh, okay. Well, these kids today, if you don't plan on going to college, you're not going to make it. Don't lie to these kids. I don't think so. I, I, I didn't go to college, and I consider myself pretty successful. I don't, because, only because... Hang on, hang on just a moment. May I ask the caller, uh, are you white? Yes, I am. Oh, wait a minute. There is nothing like an uneducated black man in America. If you are uneducated and a minority, you are going nowhere. You will end up at McDonald's. If That's not right. McDonald's, Burger King or Wendy's. Right. And God may bless you with a job at Macy's, if you're lucky, all right? It's easier to get a job when you are uneducated and white in America, okay? So please, sister, you know, we appreciate what you're saying, but that doesn't apply for me. Well, wait a minute. Yeah. Phil, Phil, you know, you know what's incredible? What am I forcing them to do? I'm sending them to the biggest party in the country. Right. I'm In college, they party hard. Ask Mel. They jam hard at Southern University. I just want, all I'm trying to do is change their dance partners from prostitutes, crackheads, and dope addicts to engineers, doctors, lawyers, and teachers. What makes you think? What makes you think they're going to change now if they didn't change before? Kids of the 90s, like myself, as a youngster of uh -huh. the 90s, it's hard to come out and say, well, yeah, I'm going to go to college and this and that. I mean, it's fine that you're encouraging us, but then again, you have to think about our willpower. I no, mean, what happens man, I'm not encouraging willpower? you. I'm telling you. No, you, you see, tell let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. How old are you? How old are you? You can't old tell you. Me I'm 18. And, you can't wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're let me ask you something. Myself. Let me ask you something. At 18 years old, I hate to tell you this, my man, you are at the dumbest point of your life. Because you think you know it all. And why in America do we give children at the dumbest point in their life the most important decision they'll ever make, and that's whether to continue their education? Yeah, but hold on. Yeah. Phil, hold Phil, on. do you understand what I'm saying? saying? So, yeah. saying? You're bad, huh? You're bad. Well, that's your first mistake by talking to me like that, okay? As a grown-up to a kid of the 90s. Wait a minute. Now, don't get me Wait wrong. Don't get me wrong. All due respect to you. What you have done is fantastic. Telling us that um, we have to go is no is no good because our parents didn't well, tell wait a us. Either you listen to me now us. or you're gonna listen later, but you're gonna oh, listen. Either you listen in ten now. in ten years, if you yeah. don't go to college, okay. you're gonna say, How come I didn't listen to that man yeah, with the blue I'm suit? Dressing like well, that. Well what are I you gonna be like? To. Dressing like that, I wouldn't want to. Not like that, man. Because it's worth it. Excuse wait, me, wait, excuse me. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. All I would like to say is that this is a brother up here trying to help you get yourself together, and you're going to sit up here and attack him? No. You are correct. That is a brother. You have been so long. Hang on, just you want back in? Yeah. OK. What to, excuse me, to what, to what this gentleman is saying about your own determination, your own willpower, let me pose a question to you. Okay? My parents are immigrants to this country. 26 years. My father graduated last year. PhD, Columbia University. Top of his class. From where did you Okay? From Jamaica, West Indies, okay? I am 16 years old. I attend the Bronx High School of Science, and I want it badly, baby, and ain't nobody gonna take it from me. There you go. You have to be your own motivation. You can't sit and wait for someone to teach you that, oh, you have to go to college. Someone shouldn't have to teach you that you should see. Have your eyes on the prize and reach for the stars. Don't wait for somebody to come and say, oh, well, you need to go to college. Nobody taught me that I had to go to college. Did somebody teach you that you had to go to school? Somebody sent you. You went, you liked it, you did what you had to do. 
You have to deprogram yourself. All this time they've been telling us, get your diploma, get your diploma. Well, now you have to reprogram yourself and tell you, I'm getting my bachelor's, I'm getting my master's. Right. They can't stop me. That's I have right. to keep going. Yeah. Yes, I think what these gentlemen are doing is wonderful, but I think you're missing a part of it. This country needs people in the trades. Did you ever get a do plumber? Do you have children? Yes, I do. And, what, and what, where, where are they? Wait a minute, where are my, they? Wait my son now. is running our printing business. Yes. Did he my, go to school? Yes, he did. Well, how come your kids don't have to go to school and that these kids... My I, husband didn't go to school. No, your He's husband, the that's back in the, the 70s. Company. Why are you doing this to these kids? Because Why do not want, wait everybody a is college to to material, college. sir. Me, Just I want them to go to point. college, and then if you want to come back and be a trade, that's fine. That's fine. Wait a minute. Wait, listen to me. These are the 90s. These are not the 1960s anymore. If these kids don't go to college, it is the biggest mistake of their life. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. If you want to be a plumber, That's God bless you. But you come back and make that your own choice. My brother-in-law is a truck driver and has a degree from Tulane University, but he's a truck driver because of his decision, not because that's all he can do. See that young man My right there? You see that thing. young man right yeah. there? He's 18 There's years old. Oh, she has, you have white collar and, and blue collar people right. in your family. He's all a right. college graduate okay. and he's got a pay. How come business? your kids are college graduates and yet you told them I don't have to tell I'm them not to go to college? Them not to, but there is a need. Not Did you everybody notice what you has just to said? go to college to make you money. You just said that some of the to make money's success. not about it. A success Money's not of about their it. life. You know yeah. what success my is? My husband's a success in my You know what success yeah. is? Right. Success is waking up every day with a smile on your face. Right. Love and doing what you want to do. Right. Uh, yes, please. <laughs> what a male angel. <laughs> I believe that. I believe uh, that. What do you think as you listen in? Angel Rodriguez, well, I sir. I believe that we shouldn't forget a population of, of youngsters that are being destroyed through the criminal justice system who don't have a chance to obtain an education. Okay. I got youngsters who are being suspended from school because of the kind of caliber teachers, unfortunately, that we have in our system today because we don't pay them a good dollar, <laughs> because we don't create smaller classes, and these kids' ex uh, expansion of their um, tolerance for, for school, it's not one that, they, unfortunately, they, they pursue. They wind up in the streets, in our, in our communities, in our communities, and wind up arrested in the right. criminal justice system, and then never going back to education. Right, well, let's not, uh, let's, you know, um, uh, Drew Brown the third. Um, I think you'll acknowledge that there are kids out there who are probably not going to make it to college. We have far too many kids out there, realistically speaking, who are not going to finish Wait high school. Wait a minute, Phil. Your children went to college. I I'm not. Well, whose kids are we talking about? Uh, because I talk to every one of them just like they're my colors. kids. No, I'm not talking about black and white. I just said, you know how I feel about that. I'm talking about whose kids are we talking about? Because all those children belong to somebody. I yeah. talk to that boy right there just like I'll talk to my all son. Right. I, just... I don't give him a choice, a, a young man, a, a young man, chill out. You chill out. A young man. Yes. Do you understand? I talk to him just like I talk right. to my son. Let me get. Let me just. Uh, here is the president of a marketing firm. Just do I, you're a marketing and a consulting firm in Tulsa, Oklahoma. All right. You're probably in United Fund and everything else out in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Um, what do you think of as, as you listen in on this uh, rather passionate exchange here? I think one thing that is happening that the sense of community that has to be a basis for everything. Now, whether a person goes to college or whether they get out of the criminal justice system, one of the elements that is very, very important is that element of the involvement of parents and the community and other mentoring groups. And I understand what this young man is saying in that in our lives, some of us do not have all of the things to make these quick snap decisions. However, the opportunities are there and if we can find a way to go back, if you will, to the time when we listened to our parents, and if they are not parents, can have become part of a mentoring group so that we can bring everybody up to that level. Back at that time, black people weren't allowed to go to school. In 1890, Booker T. Washington went and got a college education, and yet these young men are going to tell me they can't get a college education. Now, I, I won't do that to these they children. Can't get a college no, education. you know what? You know what he's trying to do? He's taking the easy way out, just like break, we did. Gentlemen. I got a break. You'll forgive me. I'll give you a chance here, and we'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> So exciting summer, huh? Been to Cedar Point yet? Well, what do you think? And 
And Berenstain Bear Country has been expanded for this season with a bunch of new attractions. And junior admission is now just $4.95. So, think you might get to the point? Hey, hello? Get to the point. Cedar Point. Tom Raper, Richmond, Indiana. Midwest headquarters for diesel pushers. What's a diesel pusher? A motor home with a diesel engine in back. Why in back? No engine hump between us. The crawl over. Floor's flat. It's quiet. You mean I can talk more quietly? Right. How about fuel mileage? Much better. Diesels last longer. More dependable. How about price? About the same as gas. Nobody beats Tom Raper's bottom line deal. Let's take I-70 to exit 149A. Call free. 1-800-RAPER-RV. Close Sunday. Save today, Tom Raper's way. This will get your attention. Best deal to come down the pike in years. Leith Furniture's awesome factory direct event. Manufacturers have shipped truckloads of new merchandise to Leith. Over 100 famous furniture makers said yes to millions of markdowns. Deep discounts all at one time. Plus, buy now with no payments for 90 days. It's the best deal to come down the pike in years. Don't miss it. Leith Furniture's factory direct sale. Since his first gold record 25 years ago. Engelbert Humperdinck has been selling records like hotcakes and driving women wild during his concerts. Find out why he has the largest fan club in the world when Engelbert Humperdinck performs on the next sound. Sally Jesse Raphael, Friday at 10 on 21 Alive. Once upon a time when we were colored, uh, published by Council Oaks Books. You, um, this is a very, very well illustrated uh, and thoughtfully uh, written account of growing up black in the South. The culture of the South for uh, black Americans before the great uh, migration uh, north, or during, should we say. 800 numbers, 247-8850. Uh, here is the book about which I spoke, when, uh, Once Upon a Time When We Were Colored. I am also pleased to call your attention to, to uh, Drew T. Brown III's Education, Hard Work, Drugs, Minus Drugs, Equal the American Dream. you got to believe is his title of his book. Here's a guy who uh, grew up in Harlem. The Navy was uh, very much the time, uh, the, tr the, the place where he became a man, how do we say? Transition. A mensch in Jewish. The transition. <laughs> a mensch. The transition from uh, from kid to man, and he now flies for um, uh, Federal Express. Hey, guess who's here? Here's Ronnie Paith. Ronnie, you're 10 years old. It says here, you're a resident of Mel's place. You're at Mel Blount's youth home. I hope you call him Mr. Blount. Mr. Blunt. You call him Mr. Blunt. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ronnie, I don't believe what I'm reading here. It says you used to smoke crack. Yes, sir. And you used to drink alcohol. Yes, sir. Uh, and you're 10? Yes, sir. This scares us, Ronnie. Scares us to death. How'd you get so straight and good looking? Well, when I came to the youth home, I just... Mr. Mill taught me a lot of discipline, gave me the love for other people to learn, to learn about the door and let the door open up my heart to show that there's a lot of there's a lot of forgiving and that you can do what you want to do after you get an education. Uh-huh. And you feel better about yourself now. Yes, sir. You must have felt that when you were doing that junk, huh? Well, the reason why I started to do that, I hung with the wrong people, didn't want to listen to my family, didn't want to listen to my grandma. You didn't want to listen is what you're saying. Yes, and I just go. I kept on going back and forth with my moms, my dads and my grandmas and other grandmas and I didn't want to listen until so I came to the youth home, the Melbourne youth home. They, they just, they opened up my heart and there I am. There you are. Oh. Right. Give a chance to um, Yes, Angel, uh, please. The, Briefly, the, the one issue that I have not heard here that I think uh, earlier you said that we go around begging for money and uh, we need to uh, the, the city, the state, 
private sources. You need to render more funds to the kind of programs that are going to help young people like this yes. to take them off the street, to give them a direction, yes. um, and hopefully to preclude them from winding up in criminal justice and assist to get an education or a training program. Because be as sure. we said, to some sure. people won't graduate from high school and go to college, but can proceed a, a positive training. Couldn't agree. Two people we don't take care of in this country, the young and the old, and we were all young and God bless, we'll all be old. We better wake up and get with it. Are you there, caller? I'm glad you waited. Hi. Hi. Uh, my comment is directed towards the 18-year-old in the, in the audience. I think he should look into himself and get his priorities straight. You know, what do you mean? Let the caller make her point. Well, I'm 18 years old, and I'm pregnant, and I'm on my way to college, and I don't have a mother, and I don't have a father, and it's all because I believe, right? And I know that there are people out there, like the guy in the blue suit, who are trying to tell me that I gotta believe and go to college. And I think that you should look into yourself and maybe come up with some of these points yourself. Can I, can I say can something, I, Phil? Yeah. Because I, I know, so real quick, real quick, through. don't blame, don't blame him, young lady, because God bless him, he's a young, he's young, but he really has never been told like I just told him, because I didn't give him any choices. I didn't tell him, please go to college. I told him to take his butt to college. And it's hard for a young man who's maybe not heard that ever in 18 years to hear it, just like I just said. He'll learn. He's a good guy. And we'll be back in just a moment. Summer in the Olive Garden is always special. It's cool, refreshing new salads. It's warm, friendly people. It's icy cold beverages. And it's hot new pastas. And this summer, it's our exciting new summer in Sicily menu. It's a feast of new dishes for lunch and dinner, like tasty chicken Palermo salad. Tempting garden spirelli. It's cool, and it's warm. It's hot, and it's cold. It's our summer in Sicily menu at the Olive Garden. Large, sweet, and juicy cantaloupe, 77 cents each. And grade A Tyson Holly Farms Whole Friars, 49 cents a pound, limit three. At Kroger. Trouble with heartburn? Well, you could change your lifestyle. Or better still, reach for Rolaids. It works fast to bring 100% relief to millions. So maybe you can't change your life, but you can get relief. Rolaids spells relief. When allergies come on this strong, Benadryl comes on stronger. McDonald's Physicians Health Plan and 21 Alive present one-of-a-kind top students from the class of 92. It's a time for celebration, that special day is near. You've taken every challenge, you've come so far this year. We salute these honored graduates and know you will find a future filled with promise because you're one of a kind. Congratulations, we salute your accomplishment of excellence. The Andrew Glover Youth Program Incorporated is at 100 Center Street in New York City. The zip is 10013. Angel Rodriguez presides and uh, has made uh, significant differences in the lives of countless young people who should not go to jail. My goodness, we just want to throw everybody in the slammer, and almost everybody in America wants to execute somebody. We are mad as hell. This country, I'm telling you. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I just wanted to make a statement about the young people that are yeah, here the and over there. Very brief statement. We are talking about students at risk here, and these students were at one time at risk at Martin Luther King High School. They did turn their lives around, and they did make a conscious decision, and they did decide that education was number one. They have the backing from the teachers that are here, from other teachers that are in the program. Sure. This young man didn't 
may not have said it correctly, but he was saying, don't tell me what to do, but let me make the decision after you tell, after you give me the choice. I don't want choices. him to make the wrong decision. He has he not made the college, wrong decision and wrong will decision. not make the wrong decision. Can I, and the thing that you told the lady over there about, why don't you want them to go to school? You're not saying that we can't. No one is saying that we can't except the white college uh, co counselors in the high schools that will look at these kids when they walk into the office and tell them that they can't go to college. Don't, don't be angry. Yes. You know, yes. They, Mel, Mel and I both went to black colleges. Yes. Don't forget about the black colleges here, in this please. country. Hey, we got lots of people here wanting to say something. Yes. I have something to say to Mr. Rodriguez. Um, I'm a teacher and I work in the South Bronx and not to say that that's a black neighborhood, a white neighborhood, but these kids can't be motivated to learn. They've got countless numbers of crack dealers, all sorts of people approaching them on the street when they walk to school in the morning. I have, no, I have kids coming up to me in school all day long. Excuse me, excuse me, do you think that you could help me? My father sits and does crack in the living room with my two sisters who are both pregnant, okay? How can you take care of these kids? How can you tell them to be motivated? Yeah. Why don't we give these young, I, I, you know, someday I'll have three hours, but it, briefly. Yes. You can help those children to be motivated. You can say to them, look at me, I'm a success, I'm a teacher, I'm here for you. And I don't think it's right that we avoid a pertinent issue that Mr. Rodriguez poses. There's a one to four ratio, a one to four ratio for every one black man that's in a college that's four in jail. You send these young kids to a penitentiary, penitentiary when they're young, they come out and they're going right back. And we'll be back in just a moment. If I was hurt and needed a lawyer, count me among those that think that actions speak louder than words. I'd want a law firm that'll handle every detail, a firm that makes the effort to know my case inside and out. I'd want someone who's a respected negotiator with the insurance companies. I'd want someone who simply won't be satisfied until they're convinced I'm getting a fair shake. That's my kind of lawyer. The Levimoff Law Offices, making the law work for you every day. Call 423-2581. Let's talk about picking pears. No, I don't mean bushel basket toting, tree climbing, green fruit, somebody looking like they got a bad figure kind of pear. No, I'm talking about picking up some fine, go-together, matching merchandise at the pick-a-pear sale going on at your get-it-today store, RTO Rent-to-Own. RTO's got a 100-watt stereo paired up with a super-sounding CD player for only $18.99 a week. Free delivery today, $18.99. Look us up in the white pages under RTO. Sister Act has become America's favorite habit. Joel Siegel calls it a divine comedy. It's outrageously funny. And Whoopi Goldberg is an absolute knockout in the best comedy of 1992. Sister Act, rated PG, now playing. Hollywood Pictures presents... A caveman. He caved. He thawed. He conquered. Go, Fungus. No! Encino Man. I'll be back. Rated PG, now playing at a theater near you. The hometown festival season is in full swing, and once again, 21 Alive is bringing you all of the excitement. This week, we'll give you a taste of German Fest, with highlights beginning on Live Line today at noon, and updates at 5, 6, and 10. Be there for all the fun, or watch all the action on your hometown festival station, 21 Alive. When the Berlin Wall came down, East and West Germany were reunited for the first time since 1961. The new Germany struggles to become a new international force in politics, but the unification is posing some tough problems as very different peoples work to blend their cultures while coping with economic woes. This is Elizabeth Knoll from German Fest. Friday on Liveline, we'll be taking your calls about the new Germany. So join me and our guests live from German Fest as we'll be taking your calls at noon on 21 Alive. For a transcript of today's program, send $3 check or money order to Donahue Transcripts, 1535 Grand Street, Denver, Colorado, 80203, or call 303-831-9000. Uh, once upon a time when we were colored, uh, Clifton Talbert's uh, contribution to our dialogue here, you got to believe, Drew T. Brown III, 
Um, yes, ma'am. My response is to the teacher in the back. I am a teacher who gives time and effort. These 40 kids that you, 20 kids that you see here today yes. had no motivation, no parents, no home. They didn't have a PhD. They don't have anyone, but we give them love and support, and that's how they make it. Yeah. 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 Yes, sir. Yeah. They made it. Service made it provided and promotional fees paid by the following. He's saying, Scrabble, America's good time game. Yeah, you Scrabble. America's good time From Milton Bradley. Dulcolax has it. The other leading laxatives don't. Only Dulcolax has a comfort coating designed to protect your stomach. Comfort coated Dulcolax. For the perfect weekend and the perfect frequent stay program, check into the new Drake, the only Swiss hotel on Park Avenue.